I'm here in the garden at St. Stephen's Catholic Church in Portland, Oregon, and today is the first day in our novena to St. Anne, the mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, in preparing for this novena, it's been fascinating discovering the apparitions of St. Anne, the various chapels and basilicas to St. Anne, miraculous statues, and, um, well, just a, a fascinating story of the finding of her relics by Charlemagne, and, uh, and so much more. In fact, as I've prepared for the novena, I keep having to refilm this video because I find out more. So isn't that the way it is? We start to get to know a saint, and that saint uh, reveals him or herself to us. And uh, we could say that there's a reason. There's a reason that God uh, helps us to know a particular saint. Now, why is it that we're praying a novena to Saint Anne this year? I've never prayed a novena to Saint Anne in the past, but it just so happened that this last year, my mother gave me two things that belonged to my grandmother. One of them was this little novena booklet, Novena Prayers in Honor of Good Saint Anne, and these are from the grotto, the, the sanctuary of our sorrowful mother uh, here in Portland, Oregon. And, well, I don't know when this dates to, but it certainly looks old. Several decades old, at least. And uh, so there's a full novena uh, to Saint Anne here. The other thing that uh, I received was this holy card. It was my grandmother's with a prayer to St. Anne on the back. And this is um, the Basilica of St. Anne de Beaupre in Canada and the miraculous statue that is there. So, with all that in mind, I discovered St. Anne. And in preparing for this novena, I find that she is rapidly <laughs> showing me more and more about herself. So I trust God that this is the novena I need to be praying this year and that I need to be leading so that you can pray it as well. Well, let's get started then. In order to start, we first have to look at, uh, at St. Anne herself and the account of St. Anne and St. Joachim, which we can receive here uh, in the golden legend of Jacobus Veragine. This is chapter 131 in volume two, uh, entitled The Birth of the Virgin. Now let's see here. I'm going to start here on page 151. Blessed Jerome, that is Saint Jerome, Blessed Jerome says in his prologue to his history of the birth of the Virgin that in his early youth he had read the story in some book and many years later was asked to put it in writing, and so he wrote it down as he remembered it from his early reading. Now, he would have been writing this probably sometime in the late 300s, or perhaps uh, in the early 400s. He, um, he uh, began uh, working on the Latin Vulgate, I believe, in the, around the year 372, and he was already a mature man at that point. So, from his early youth, well, sometime in the early 300s, the 4th century. And here's what he writes then. Uh, Joachim, a Galilean from the town of Nazareth, took St. Anna, a native of Bethlehem, as his wife. They were both righteous and walked without reproach in all the commandments of the Lord. They divided all their goods into three parts, one part being reserved for the temple and its ministers, one for transient strangers and the poor, and the third for their own needs and those of their household. They lived for twenty years without offspring and made a vow to the Lord that if he granted them a child, they would dedicate it to the service of God. And with this in mind, they went up to Jerusalem for the three principal feasts. Now once, when Joachim and his kinsmen traveled to Jerusalem for the Feast of the Dedication, he went with the others to the altar to make his offering. And when the priest saw him, he angrily ordered him away and upbraided him for presuming to approach the altar of God, declaring that it was not proper, proper for one who was subject to the law's curse to offer sacrifice to the law, Lord of the law, 
nor for a sterile man who made no increase to the people of God to stand among men who begot sons. Joachim, seeing himself thus rejected, was ashamed to go home and face the contempt of his kinsmen who had heard the priest's denunciation. Instead, he went and lived with the shepherds. Then one day an angel appeared with great brilliance to him when he was alone. He was disturbed by the apparition, but the angel told him to not be afraid and said, I am an angel of the Lord sent to announce to you that your prayers have been heard and your alms have ascended in the sight of the Lord. I have seen how you were put to shame and, and heard the reproach of childlessness wrongly put upon you. God punishes not nature, but sin, and therefore when he closes a woman's womb, he does this in order to open it miraculously later on, and to make it known that what is born is not the fruit of carnal desire, but of the divine generosity. Did not the first mother of your race suffer the shame of childlessness until she was ninety years old, and yet bore Isaac, to whom was promised the blessing of all nations? Was not Rachel barren for a long time, and yet bore Joseph, who had power over all Egypt? Who was stronger than Samson, or holier than Samuel? Yet they both had sterile mothers. Believe these reasons and examples, which show that delayed conceptions and infertile childbearing are usually all the more wonderful. So then your wife will bear you a daughter, and you will call her Mary. As you have vowed, she will be consecrated to the Lord from her infancy and filled with the Holy Spirit from her mother's womb. She will not live outside among the common people, but will abide in the temple at all times, lest any sinister suspicion be aroused about her. And as she will be born of an unfruitful mother, so miraculously the Son of the Most High will be born of her. His name will be Jesus, and through him all nations will be saved. And let this be a sign for you. When you arrive at the golden gate of Jerusalem, Anna, your wife, will be there waiting for you. She has been worried because you were so late and will be glad at the sight of you. And with these words, the angel left him. Well, meanwhile, Anna was weeping bitterly, not knowing where her husband had gone, when the same angel appeared to her revealed to her the same things he had told Joachim, and added that, for a sign, she should go to Jerusalem's Golden Gate, where she would meet her husband as he returned. And so they met, as the angel had predicted, and were happy to see each other and to be sure they were to have a child. They adored God and went to their home, joyfully awaiting the fulfillment of the divine promise. Anna conceived and brought forth a daughter, and they called her name Mary. When she was weaned at the age of three, the parents brought her the, to the Lord's temple with offerings, and around the temple there were fifteen steps corresponding to the fifteen gradual psalms, and because the temple was built on a hill, there was no way to go to the altar of Holocaust, which stood in the open, except by climbing the steps. The virgin child was set down at the lowest step, and mounted to the top without help from anyone, as if she were already full grown. And having made their offering, Joachim and Anna left their daughter in the temple with the other virgins and went home. Mary advanced steadily in all holiness. Angels visited her every day, and she enjoyed the vision of God daily. And that is about... All I see about Anna and Joachim in this chapter, it goes on to various other things, including the espousals of the Blessed Virgin Mary to Joseph, etc. But there we have the story of Saints Anna and Joachim, and that's the beginning of the story. But there's more to the story, which we will find out in the coming days. What then happens? How is it that Saint Anne comes to France? How is it 
that Charlemagne discovers her relics, how is it that there are apparitions and miracles and basilicas that are built in her honor? Well, all of that will come in the coming days. But today, we need to pray our first day, our first prayer of the Novena. Now, the prayers we'll be using are linked below. You'll, uh, you can click on this link and find these prayers on the website mothersforpriests.org. I will also have copies of this in the church, and we will pray this every day uh, now in the church after Mass uh, for the duration of the Novena. Now let's go through the garden over to the Shrine of Mary to pray our Novena prayer. You will hear a slight rustling here as I move the microphone and let us be on our way. Beautiful summer evening, perfect time for Novena to St. Anne. And here we are at the shrine of Blessed Virgin Mary. Pardon the rustling noises of the microphone. And let us pray now our Novena prayer for day one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear Saint Anne, I appeal to you and place myself under your great motherly care as I begin this novena in your honor. Please listen to my prayers and requests. Help me also to begin this time of prayer with a heart open to the loving grace of God. Give me the strength to begin a new life that will last forever. And finally, blessed Saint Anne, I ask you to recommend me to your daughter, the Most Holy Virgin Mary. Through her, May I receive the spirit of prayer, humility, and the love of God. Amen. Now let us call to mind our intentions for this novena. Keep in mind, as you get to know St. Anne over the course of this next week, your intentions will grow because you'll know what to pray for. And now let us pray the prayer to St. Anne to be prayed every day. O oh, glorious St. Anne, you are filled with compassion for those who invoke you and with love for those who, who suffer. Heavily burdened with the weight of my troubles, I cast myself at your feet and humbly beg of you to take the present intention which I recommend to you in your special care. Please recommend it to your daughter, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and place it before the throne of Jesus so that he may bring it to a happy issue. Continue to intercede for me until my request is granted, but above all, Obtain for me the grace one day to see my God face to face, and with you and Mary and all the saints to praise and bless him for all eternity. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Anne, help me now, and at the hour of my death, good Saint Anne, intercede for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, join me tomorrow for day two in our Novena to St. Anne. Please subscribe to this video channel. Hit the bell to be notified of future videos. Please share this video with a friend and like it, and don't miss a day of prayer with us.